Pen Structure Graphene. Um, it was actually derived theoretically in 1947 by Wallace and the approach was used uh, is the tight banding tight banding model there as we discussed there are two types of bands you have pi bands pi bands and sigma bands Those will be the pi bonds will be important for electronic properties and sigma bonds they are high energy so high energy this means they are far away from the Fermi level so we can ignore them for in this consideration and the pi bonds have two sublattices so you have two sublattices because of the bipartite nature nature of graphene crystal in this video we will discuss the recipe how to do it the, the derivation is a bit more involved we'll see if we if we need to do it uh, uh, separately but the recipe is the following so recipe first we need to find the trial wave functions constructed from orbital wave functions. The orbital wave functions, orbital wave functions, sort of so atomical orbitals means like some atomical orbitals, and those are in terms of the position of the electron and the position of the ion. So this is. Electron, this is ion. And because it's a crystal, so Rj is actually um, defined by the Bravais lattice vectors. So Rj is Mj A1 plus uh, Nj A2. So the second part, we our trial wave function, then we need to come up with some trial wave function and that uh, trial wave function so it must reflect uh, the symmetry of underlying lattice of the of these um, of graphene hexagonal lattice so it must be invariant under translation by arbitrary rj or i whatever by arbitrary lattice vector mm. So this, this requirement for uh, translational invariance is the essence of the Bloch's theorem. Bloch's theorem. So if we have the vector Ri, and the, that's the lattice vector, then the associated translation operator will be, which is curly Ri, will be e to the ih bar p hat dot r i and um, and this is our uh, crystal momentum or pseudo momentum right that's what we discussed in the last in the last video and it's um, a defined module the reciprocal lattice vector so mode g where g is um, g j some vector is m j star a e one star it's vector plus m j star a two star and the reciprocity uh, so we are using this um, the reciprocity in as a i dot a j star equals to pi del i del i j. This is a Kronecker delta. All right. So if you use this um, this Bloch method or Bloch theorem, the the idea would be the following. So using the Bloch Bloch's 
method. The tower trial wave function, in order for, to be uh, invariant, you can come up with a solution like, like that. There will be some k. R. So it's in the real space, but as a function of this of this pseudo momentum, it's kind of like it, it, it depends on the pseudo momentum. Um, and you can have so I'm putting some some bits here, but that's like this one over square root of n is just a normalization condition. So you want to have your wave function normalized, and you do it as a k dot r j. That's our translational. Um, translational um, translation operator times the atomic wave function we call it atomic orbital atomic yeah which is r minus rj and this thing is uh, um, tau r ri invariant You can check that one when 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 you act by. So you would just need to check how this tau ri acting on this psi k of r. It should it should return psi of k r. That's the translational invariance, and you can check how this works when you when you multiply by those exponents. What will happen? Uh, what will happen to this um, to the wave function? Um, I'm not going to discuss this here, but what I want to discuss actually is going back again to real space. So we have these two carbon atoms, and we're labeling this A and B sub lattices, right? And there, there we also introduced this um, this delta, say delta J, which the which is this nearest neighbor translation, and. Um, and the Hamiltonian of our of our um, Schrodinger equation um, is not, um, and the the commutation of this uh, translational operator defined for for this delta delta j. So it doesn't it doesn't commute. Okay, it doesn't commute with the Hamiltonian, and that's because. Uh, that's because A and B, they cannot be connected by, by RJ. Cannot be connected by the lattice vector. So this means that A and B must be treated separately. Yeah, so this block method just so just using the same the same notation. That's basically the requirement that uh, the tau. Oops. Tau r r i commutes with the Hamiltonian. So now. The wave function we can then instead of this general description where you have um, you have the summation over different uh, k points, we would just need to treat um, as that combination of uh, the two um, wave functions for one for each sub lattice. So the picture is not that complicated actually. Write this psi of k r is now the co some coefficient times psi of k for sub lattice a of r plus another coefficient psi of k for sub lattice b function of r so you have like now you have two components of the wave function so you have a component and B component, and the total wave function is the linear combination of the two components. Those um, 
those coefficients are quite important. We can we can discuss this later. You can also, if you are familiar with this notion, you can also think them in terms of the block sphere. Hmm? Block sphere. Where this is your skx, ky, and here you will have the kind of the weight on the on the a sub lattice, and here is the weight on the b sub lattice. Then your total wave function will be a sphere. Oh my god, a sphere. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's try to do it slightly better. Um, okay. okay, slightly more spherical. A sphere, and then you will have a vector. So your a function now, this total psi, is the is a kind of a vector on this uh, uh, on this on this sphere. Where if your let's say vector is pointing towards um, to the up, this means that the bk. So for this vector b of k equals zero and if it points downwards you will have b of k you will have a of k equals zero uh, and so on and all kinds of combinations so if it's if it's restricted to this plane it means that the the ratio of the a and a, a to b is kind of like the same and you will have only some phase angle between the two components of the wave function so some e to the i mm. Some e to the i phi, some 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 angle phi, there. Well, all right. Let's um, that's that's one part, and then each of those wave functions. If okay, no, it's not that simple actually. So each of those wave functions is again. This is your um, um, those those are again in, written in terms of block block states. So you will have psi psi of k. A, B, either of those as a function of R coordinate is now you do the summation in this Ri e to the i k dot Ri that's the, the block part times the phi this is a, the atomic orbital A, B let me clean this stuff no space which is a function of R plus delta J minus R I. So now we have all the all the atoms actually are taken into account. So now it's all it's all set and we now treat two sub lattices independently. So basically we have the wave function, it looks quite uh, quite messy, and you would need to solve Schrodinger equation. So Schrodinger equation. We're doing time independent part. So your h psi of k equals e k those vectors psi of k and uh, the solution is quite um, it's quite technical. We'll see if we if we go through that one in the next video probably. But I want to give you the intuition what we will get. We will get a solution in terms of two bands, two bands those which I draw before. Those you can get rigorously, and uh, those will be these pi bands, which we already discussed. One is pi, and the other is pi star. This one is filled with electrons. It's called also valence, valence band. The other one is empty. It's called also conduction band. And uh, and then the question would be how how precisely we want to um, we want to do the calculations and uh, how many the how many interactions we want to take into account because if you look if you look for graphene so there is our lattice and so on. And what you can do, you can consider first only the the overlap between those near between the nearest neighbors. So this is our t nearest neighbor, the overlap between the nearest neighbor orbitals. But you can also consider the overlap um, 
between the next nearest neighbors, let's say between this orbital and this orbital, right? Those are quite quite further away, so they should be much weaker and they will only mildly affect the structure of the bonds, but this T next nearest neighbor uh, will give you some additional um, better, um, more precise results on the on those electronic bonds. So if T and, and N is zero, then your energy dispersion relation as terms of uh, for this for the positive side uh, the this pi uh, um, the, the the positive solution for the pi star it will be minus e to the k and the minus one so they will be anti-symmetric and the but this is uh, electron hole symmetric so you will have the same behavior just with the minus sign difference if you introduce if is t n and n is not zero then uh, this this uh, this is no longer valid and the electrons and holes they will disperse slightly differently there are also will be a special points actually which accidentally happen to be at the k points in the reciprocal space so those k k points the energy at those points is called also Dirac points, the energy will be zero. And if you look closer to these K points in the reciprocal space, I can give you a drawing in the reciprocal space like that. So this is our K, K prime. So at those points, if you now draw this as kind of your Kx, Ky, and this will be energy direction. So the dispersion around those points will be kind of like a linear and at that point, the energy is zero. So the bonds actually are crossing, and they um, they have the zero energy at zero moment at those two points. And because there are like four more points which are equivalent, you will have kind of the six of those linear linear uh, touching points. Those are your uh, Dirac points in graphene. This is uh, Dirac points. Then they will okay. They will disperse. It will be quite a quite a complicated picture. I'll, I'll paste the solution in the, into this one uh, later, and then we'll discuss the implications of, of this uh, particular behavior of graphene.